would have guessed that glass could do so much to light? Newton did. In fact, an experiment of his using a prism told us a lot about how light works. We all know how a glass prism can make a rainbow by sending light in one side, but until Newton, it was believed that the prism added the color to the white light put in, almost like it was dyeing the light as it went through. What Newton thought was that if this was true, sending colored light through another prism would make a second rainbow. It didn't. And Newton realized that the prism wasn't adding colors to white light, it was splitting the colors that were already there. How does a prism make a rainbow of colors? It all comes down to a property of light called refraction. While reflection is light bouncing off of something, refraction is light passing through something. Remember, light is a particle that moves in a wave, and depending on how quickly it goes through the wave motion, a measurement known as wavelength, determines the color we perceive. Light has a definite speed too, about 186,000 miles per second, at least in a vacuum. In air, light is actually slightly slower, in water even more so, and in diamond, light can move at 40% of its regular speed. Now since light moves at different rates through different materials, whenever it hits a material, like glass, it needs to slow down. And when it slows down, the direction it moves changes. Depending on the angle, this could be nothing at all to really off from how it starts. The actual math behind this is relatively simple. First we need the light ray, and the surface is passing through. Then, relative to the surface normal, which is basically a line poking straight out of the surface, you take the angle that the light is entering. Take the sine of that, multiply it by the ratio of the two speeds of light, called a refractive index, and then take the inverse sine of that. What you get is the angle of light on the other side. This is also known as Snell's Law, worked out by Willebrord Snellius. Anyways, with this, we can explain why something like a lens or a glass of water warps objects you see through it. What it can explain is why prisms make colors. At least until you add one more rule. A refractive index, the rate light travels through an object compared to a vacuum, changes with wavelength. With this, we now know that red light bends less than violet light does because the wavelength of violet is higher than red. Just like how you can calculate the angle light will bend through the other side of a prism, you can find the refractive index if you know the angles that the light enters and exits an object. So sadly, after a few calculations, I'm afraid to tell the Pink Floyd fans that the album marked Dark Side of the Moon is scientifically inaccurate. The refractive indices of this prism are all over the place, not to mention the color should have started to split inside the prism rather than on the right side. Now all this math about refraction is useful in helping us make lenses and explaining why cameras have color fringe in their images, but do color splitting properties of prisms see any real use? The short answer is yes. Ever see a CFL? The light it makes looks like it's white, so clearly, as we've learned, it must emit all the colors, right? Not so. In fact, if you put a CFL through a prism, you can see a few strips of colors at very specific wavelengths. This is called an emission spectrum, and it helps us determine what elements are present in a substance. When something releases light energy, typically from being burned, depending on the elements in the chemical, different wavelength photons are released. Each element has its own emission spectrum that acts like a fingerprint, and once the spectrum gets separated in an optical spectrometer, you can measure what wavelengths are being emitted and identify what element they match. Not so bad for a glass triangle. So there you have it. The same property that makes lenses work, causes rainbows, warps sight underwater, disproves album art, and can even tell you what's going on inside a light bulb. Behind all of these occurrences, this is the same principle that over 300 years ago told Newton what light is really made of.